Hi, my name is Kurt Rees, and I'm here to present to you on how to use the optical data coupler with the device master for serial communications. I've been with Pepperell and Fuchs for about six years, and before that I was with a major software company doing technical support. And before that I was 20 years in the Navy, also doing technical support, working on computers, that sort of thing. And it's my pleasure to give you this course, and I hope that you get a lot from it. Thank you. The contents of our session today will be how our optical data coupler is used, how our device master is used, application areas, testing topology, configuration, and the conclusion. One component being used in our training session today is the optical data coupler LS682. An advantage is stability over long distances, up to 300 meters. Optimum use of existing space. There is no minimum distance requirement. Fast and easy commissioning. And we'll go over a video on aligning these two units. And maximum availability. Next is the device master and how are they used? This particular training will cover the ICDMRX TCP Device Master, basically four DB9 serial ports capable of providing serial outputs of RS-232, 422, and 485. It has two RJ45 network ports, which functionally act as a mini hub. Uh, so there's a continuity of uh, ethernet communication where this can take the place of a switch in a small environment. And at the very top, there's a terminal strip power connector, which takes 24 volts DC. Device masters are used in a variety of environments. It's used in a broadcasting industry, where they're used as serial device servers to facilitate communication between television sites, as well as various peripherals at those sites. Satellite control, connection, and unit maneuvering. Uh, what we can do is control the satellite dishes to remain in contact with the satellites. Satellite signal collection, transfer from traveling unit to control room, and line feed and taped video collection from mobile unit. Other application areas are broadcast creation, where feeds from associated press and other news organizations are collected and transferred to host platforms. It does data capture, sharing, storage, and recovery of data, and full-scale production using the input, edit, timelines of the broadcast. A lot of times, uh, broadcasters use the device master to control remote cameras, uh, for instance, during live football games, and providing input to the large scoreboards. There's also broadcast solutions, media asset management, automation, and media creation. The device master is also used in the energy industry controlling processes and renewable energy systems, including wind power and underwater hydropower. I've talked with customers that use the device masters in the windmills and wind towers to send sensor data back down to the control stations. Uh, we've seen device masters used in the oil rigs, where they monitor levels in the oil storage tanks. The use is uh, very, very uh, flexible according to application. The data usually comes from the sensor, goes through the device master, and goes through a switch or directly into the PLC uh, controller. Also, this data can be uplinked via satellite dish to remote control rooms. Other areas of use are in government agencies to facilitate multiple location data transmission and complex sensor system coordination. I've talked to customers that use the device masters in prisons to control opening and closing prison doors. They also are used on military bases 
uh, for virtual serial tunneling to pass data from storage tanks to centrally managed locations. Also, industrial gateways provide communication to PLCs using either Ethernet IP, Modbus, or Profinet. This device master is used in uh, medical fields for communication and data collection applications such, such as software bridges between medical facilities, patient rooms, and electronic medical record EMR servers. I've talked to people that use the device master in uh, an optometrist setting where they control the lens grinding machines. They also pass data from CT scanning equipment and MRI equipment to the control room. You name it, the variety is there and the application is unlimited. Device masters are also used in a transportation area. You see the cabinet box on the side of the roads. A lot of these have either a PLC switch and device master, and the device master takes serial communication and collects the data from traffic cameras, from other sensors, and provides information to the traffic signs that warn of traffic ahead. They also facilitate communication for transportation tolling systems, emergency traffic signal override systems, and even air traffic control centers. Device masters are used in a setting of uh, ASRS systems, which is the Automated Storage and Retrieval System, and they convert the serial data to Ethernet and convert it back to serial when needed. For instance, a cart with a barcode scanner and a device master can scan packages on shelves and pass that data to a PLC or other host that needs this particular data. The optical data coupler can be used for this in conjunction with the device master where an ethernet cable is not very safe or feasible and as long as there's a line of sight of light, then the data can be transmitted that way as well. For our configuration today, we'll be using just four components. We'll be using a one-port device master panel mount, a four-port DIN rail device master, and two optical data couplers, the LS682DAEM-F1 and the F2. The testing topology will start with our laptop. Has a Ethernet RJ45 going from the laptop to the device master and a USB to serial converter from the laptop to the first serial port of the device master. The other Ethernet port is connected to the optical data coupler, and the optical data coupler is aligned optically with the second remote, which is then connected through an RJ45 Ethernet connector to our remote device master. And you have a serial device attached to the DB9 serial port. In our example, I've got a loopback connector which basically ties send and receive. So the data sent will be coming back to the laptop. After configuring the topology as described in a previous slide, we'll go ahead and align the optical data couplers. With this video, I see one unit being adjusted with the blinking light being an indication of the signal strength of the remote device master. So you can just adjust the signal strength of local and know where the signal strength is of the remote and adjust accordingly. And here we have a full signal strength on both device masters. When everything is connected and looks like is configured and communicating correctly, we'll need to test our network communication. For this, we use the ping command. And we do ping, and this is the IP address of the local device master, 10.8.13.176. And you see the latency is 
less than one millisecond, and we have good communications. We sent four and received four. Next, we'll do a ping on the remote device master, 10.8.13.177, and we also have good communication. So we're good to proceed. Our next step is to configure our device masters into a virtual serial tunnel so both device masters will connect with each other over a socket. On the local device master, we see under TCP connection that we have to have it enabled. Make sure you're in listen mode. And it's listening on port 8000, which is the default. We're going to connect to the remote IP address 10.8.13.177, which is the remote device master. And we're going to connect to its port 8000, which corresponds to the first port or port one. And connect is going to be always. On the remote device master, we'll see our TCP connection is also enabled. It is listening on port 8000. We don't need an IP address here because we already have one on the local device master connecting to this one. And everything else is set at the default. Now we're going to confirm that the two device masters are communicating with each other. On the local device master, we go to the port overview and we see the remote socket connection is the IP address of the remote IP address and port 8000. On the remote device master port overview, we can see under socket connections, our remote IP address 10.8.13.176 is the IP address of our local device master that is connecting to this remote device master. Here you'll see the non-reserved socket number of 1046. This will change depending on the different sockets in use. This number will usually be different. And we can see a receive count and transmit count. This confirms that we have two device masters communicating with each other. In conclusion, we can test the serial communication, send it through the computer through the COM port, connect it to the application that sends the data. To verify if the data reaches the device master correctly, we can open up the device master web page and then go to the diagnostics tab and port monitor to the particular port that we want to monitor. We start the monitoring process for the particular port used and we can see the data there. Thank you for attending the webinar on the optical data couplers used with the device master. If you have any further questions, please contact me. My name is Kurt Rees. My number is 763-957-6000. And you can reach me by email at krees at us.pepperell-fuchs.com. Once again, thank you.